corpses piled over the ground. Black smoke was dispersing, and the three were tense and guarded. After that tall mountain had migrated behind them undetected, the path ahead finally came into view. Thick black woods, layered and overlapped, exceedingly horrifying, and every so often there'd be the strange squawks of black crows. When Shilin heightened his alert, all his senses sharpening, he unconsciously reached for Ho Chang's hand at the same time. Yet, unexpectedly, the moment their hands touched, he noticed an alarming sign. Ho Chang was obviously a ghost, but at that very moment, his body temperature was blistering hot like a high fever. Shilian was instantly taken aback. He whispered, San Lang, ah, oh, are you changing back? Although Ho Chang was burning from his forehead to his fingertips, his expression never changed. Soon, he said. Ho Chang was going to change back, and in their current situation, it was definitely great news. However, the time before he was formally returned to his old self had to be the most important, most critical point. Making a split-second decision, Shilin cried, I'll set up an array and shield you. Then, he went straight into action. He called forth Ruya and made it circle around Ho Chang to form a large circle of four meters, then plunged Fang Xin in the front of the circle as the door lock to the ceiling circle. Ho Chang sat down on the ground to meditate and said, Gurga, keep Fang Xin with you for defense. No, Shilian said, this array can't be sloppy. There must be a bladed weapon that's touched human blood. Before he finished speaking, he felt that there was something rubbing against him behind his back. When he looked back, he was instantly speechless. There was a tiny, little silver scimitar standing upright behind him, blinking his big silver eye and rubbing against him with its hilt, like it was nominating itself for the task. Shilin crouched down and asked, Oming, how come you're like this too? The infamous scimitar, Oming, its blade long and slender, wickedly seductive and wild, had now shrunk at least half in size. That silver eye used to be long and narrow, but now it looked like it had also transformed into the eye of a child, big and round, bright and shining. However, hearing Shilian, it seemed to feel aggrieved and continued to try and push its hilt into Shilian's hand. Feming also crouched down. So this is the infamous scimitar, Feming, he asked. He looked like he was about to reach out and touch it. Feming changed face instantly, pointing his blade threateningly toward him. Fortunately, Feming pulled away just in time, otherwise blood would certainly have been spilled. Shilin struck Erming. Fang Xin is still better suited, he said. Fang Xin didn't move. Erming, who had tried so enthusiastically to offer itself up, but ended up so blatantly rejected, weepingly hopped back to Ho Chang's side. Ho Chang didn't even spare it a look before he smacked it with a backhand slap. What are you crying about? he asked. Isn't it because you're useless? Trash. Oming fell flat on the ground like a piece of unwanted scrap metal, like a drop dead from that strike. Shilin didn't know whether to laugh or to cry, and immediately picked up Oming in his arms and stroked it a few times. Nothing of the sort, he said. Don't listen to him. You're not trash. You're very useful. Pei Ming couldn't stand the mood in the circle anymore. He stepped out, standing at the boundary, slowly pulling out his sword once more. 
Things weren't supposed to be this stressful, he said. But who knew we'd run into such an impressive, troublesome character from the start. Your Highness really does have the best of luck. The reason why the group of them made the trip to Mount Tonglu was to annihilate any candidates who had the potential to become a supreme. So they must seek the most powerful amongst the ghosts. Shilin also couldn't tell any more whether this counted as good luck or bad luck. However, Ho Chang said, Why does General Pei think so matter-of-factly that it's His Highness's luck that's the problem? Have you never thought that maybe Swift Life Extinguishing Blade was coming after you? Pei Ming laughed out loud. If that ghost was a woman, I'd believe it. Yet unexpectedly, he hadn't laughed for very long before his face suddenly changed and he leapt to the side. When he looked up again, blood dripped and flowed down his cheek. A bloody cut had appeared on Pei Ming's face. He felt his face in disbelief and his whole palm was smeared with blood. This was no scratch. The two of them were both on high alert, yet Shilian was perfectly fine and didn't sense any killing intent directed at him at all. So he said truthfully, it seems it really is coming for you, General Pei. Pei Ming was about to speak, but the sound of a sharp blade slashing through the air came once more. This time he was prepared and swung his sword. The strike really did hit something, and a figure appeared in the air, splitting in two from the strike. It crashed to the ground, one half the upper body, the other half the lower body, the eyes gloomy and vicious, glaring at Pei Ming. It was that swift, life-extinguishing blade. Pei Ming walked over and stepped on his chest, the tip of his sword pointing at his throat. What are you? he asked. That creature had said he was once the blade of an executioner, but if that was really the case, then after Pei Ming chopped him in half, he should have shown his true form and ended this ridiculous act. What kind of blade could still do as it pleased after snapping in half? Yet unexpectedly, that swift blade demon bulged its eyes, sneered, and broke Pei Ming's sword with its bare hands. There was a loud clang, and Pei Ming's eyes instantly widened. It wasn't just him. Even Shilian had a similar reaction. At the very least, Pei Ming was a formally ascended martial god. Even if he was situated in Mount Tonglu, and his spiritual powers were suppressed to the bare minimum, his spiritual device still shouldn't have so easily broken. Swift, life-extinguishing blade laughed soundly, saying, I can't believe you'd use such a trashy sword. His sword was broken, so Pei Ming resorted to using his fists as his sword. But that swift, life-extinguishing blade slapped his left hand on the ground and launched himself into the air. Pressing the fingers of his right hand together, he shot out a blast. Where his palm blast blew past, the bright chilling light of metal shone. It was a gust with razor edges. It appeared that its true form really was a sharp, bladed weapon. Shilin stood within the circle and was about to leave to help, but was stopped by Ho Chang. He said with a low voice, Burger, watch closely. Pei Ming also shouted, no need to interfere. If he, the esteemed martial god of the north, couldn't even defeat a mere ghost blade from the outer edges of Mount Tonglu, then how could he face himself? However, although that ghost blade only had his upper half body, he was extremely agile. No matter where Pei Ming struck, it looked as if he had already predicted every step, which made things rather pessimistic for Pei Ming. After hundreds of moves, over ten gashes had been opened on Pei Ming's body. 
Shirin couldn't watch anymore and called out, General Pei, come back into the circle. Pei Ming's face was growing grimmer and grimmer. He refused to retreat, and Shirin couldn't bluntly join the fight to make it two against one. To some martial gods, to require help when fighting one on one was a form of humiliation. Shirin tried again. General Pei, come back. There's something weird going on. Can't you tell? This man knows your sword techniques too well. Naturally, Pei Ming had also noticed. He just couldn't believe it. But since even Shirian, who was observing on the side, had seen, he had to believe it, even if he didn't want to. Shirian pulled Fang Xin out and opened a small gap. Pei Ming took the chance to leap back into the circle. His expression extremely grim. Shilian plugged Feng Xin anew and asked, General Pei, aren't you going to pick up your broken spiritual device? He Ming wiped away the blood on his forehead and replied darkly, That's not my spiritual device. It's just a decent sword I picked randomly. Hearing this, Shilian sighed a breath of relief. Although any sword Pei Ming picked randomly would be a fairly sumptuous sword, it still couldn't be measured as equal to a spiritual device. He asked, why didn't General Pei bring a spiritual device when coming here? I haven't forged any, Pei Ming replied. Shilian was even more curious now. Why not? Typically, martial gods would forge their most agreeable weapon into a spiritual device. It would be akin to adding wings to a tiger. Pei Ming hadn't yet answered, and that swift, life-extinguishing blade hummed coldly, saying, It's obvious. It's because his most agreeable sword no longer exists. Pei Ming frowned. Who exactly are you? He asked. You're not asking what exactly he is? Shilin asked. The swift, life-extinguishing blade humped. Who am I? Ha! Pei Ming, back then, you snapped me with a palm blast. Did you ever expect today to come? Shilian's eyes widened. General Pei, do you know him? Pei Ming pondered for a long while, and his expression grew more and more solemn. He tried. Your Ming Guang? Hearing that name, swift, life-extinguishing blade smile faded. He now no longer looked like that common, puny little ghost from earlier. Shilian questioned. He's called Ming Guang? General Pei, aren't you supposed to be General Ming Guang? In an instant, countless possible stories of fraudulent substitution flashed through his mind. Because there was now a precedent in the heavens, they weren't outlandish assumptions. He couldn't help but think, is this another Earth Master Yi? Pei Ming seemed to have seen through what he was thinking, and said, while covering his wounds with his hands, Your Highness, what are you thinking? I already told you, I'm the genuine, authentic General Pei. I'm the real thing. Then why did you call him Ming Guang? Xianian demanded. Because his name is Ming Guang. It's the name I came up with. He's my sword, General Pei answered. Xianian nodded and said, Could it be the general who snapped his sword? That's right, Pei Ming replied. Ming Guang was my personal sword when I was a mortal and was personally snapped by yours truly hundreds of years ago. No wonder. No wonder the swift, life-extinguishing blade knew Pei Ming's sword techniques so well, like he could predict his every move. No wonder that, even when it was slashed into two, it could still move so willfully, like that abdominal injury had no effect on it whatsoever. It was because the sword had followed Pei Ming and won countless victories from north to south. Thus, it naturally knew Pei Ming's art inside and out, and it was because he was already snapped in two. 
So that gash from before was him stabbing himself, Jillian said. Then the spiritual light on his wound was mine, Fleming replied. Back then, I ascended as soon as I snapped him in half. I suppose that must be when the light stained him. That can't be cleaned away. The swift, life-extinguishing blade, no, Mingua, started using his hand as a sword, slashing toward Feng Xin with every move. His expression was gloomy and sharp, like he was attacking Pei Ming's person. She then couldn't help but ask, Um, General Pei, why does your sword resent you so much? What did you do to it? What's the story behind the general who snapped his sword? Pei Ming was feeling for his pull bottle and replied, Some raggedy story from hundreds of years ago. What's the point of talking about it now? Let's find a way to beat him first. Although there was Roya forming the circle, if Feng Xin should be cut down, then half the array would fall, just like how, after breaking the lock, there was only a door left. Xilin glanced behind him. Ha Chang had entered his meditation, his eyes shut, seeming to sense nothing of the outside world. Xilin was slightly reassured. However, Pei Ming's voice pulled him back. Your Highness, will your sword hold? Shilin turned his head back around. I don't know, he said. Feng Xin's old, after all. That's all right, Pei Ming said. Ning Guang's pretty old, too. Shilin sighed in relief. If that's the case, as long as there's no outside help, then we should be able to hang on for a while. Yet unexpectedly, before he finished his words, a series of heavy footsteps sounded from the direction of the forest. Soon, a giant, savage-looking, dark-skinned, burly man, donned in broken armor, appeared. That burly man was abnormally tall, and the moment they saw him, both Shilian and Pei Ming dripped a drop of cold sweat. That burly man had noticed that there was a man chopping at a sword madly with bare hands. He seemed to find it astonishing, so he walked over. Shilian and Pei Ming both covered their faces with their hands at the same time and turned around. As for Ming Guang, when he noticed a giant corpse walking toward him, looking to be one of great strength, he called out to him, Hey, big guy, give me a hand. Help me knock out the sword and break the array. I'll split the heads inside with you. Yet that burly man didn't seem to be a man of the Midlands and didn't die a ghost of the Midlands. So the languages were different and he didn't seem to understand what was said. He only shouted back. The two shouted at each other for a while, but nothing was achieved except veins popping. Pei Ming did his best to look natural while keeping his face covered, trying to appear suave. He whispered, Your Highness, what's that savage yelling about? Shilian whispered too. He thought your sword was trying to provoke him, so he got mad, telling him to kneel down and beg for mercy, otherwise he'll beat him to death. Oh good, Pei Ming said. Hope they start fighting soon then. Yet, unexpectedly, that giant man seemed to have heard their whispers and turned his head around, staring at them closely. Shilian and Pei Ming tightened their hands, covering their faces, no longer able to care about appearing natural. However, that burly man still recognized them, and he stomped the entire ground, quaking with it. He roared, It's you, scrap collecting cultivator. Pei Su's boss. Since they were recognized, the two dropped their hands. After some hesitation, Shilian said warmly, using the Banyue tongue, General Kermo, please calm down. That peculiar burly man was naturally Kermo, who had escaped his seal after Mount Tonglu's tremors 
aroused millions of ghosts. He was first captured by Shelian, and had also seen Pei Ming, who stood next to Pei Su during his trial. Seeing his enemies, his eyes reddened, and without another word, he kicked at Fang Xin. The sword was instantly knocked off center by an image. Seeing this, Ming Guang clapped and cheered, Divine! And then he continued to shoot out blast after blast. Seeing Fang Xin shaking harder and harder under their combined attacks, Xilin felt Hua Chang's forehead, but his hand instantly shrank back from the heat. He asked, What should we do? Thank you.